Hello, physics students. This is Mr. Fahm, and welcome to this brand new day. This should be day two. This is the lesson for March 31st, 2020. So on the last video, I covered the basics of force again, because it's very important what we're going to be doing. You need to know force to understand how gravity works. And so what you should have seen is that by going to the moon, you should have predicted that the amount of force it takes to move the box should have been less than all of the others, should have been less than the earth. So for example, the earth, it took around 480 newtons to move the box on the moon. It would take less. Why is there going to be less force? Well, because there's less gravity on the moon. And that's what we're going to cover today is we're going to cover gravity. So. Um, what you saw is you pushed the box, it moved forward. So you can kind of say that by pushing the box, you have a repulsive force. To repel means to push away. And, you know, in chemistry, I talk about how you never actually physically touch anything. For example, this coffee cup here, full of some delicious king cake coffee. Mm. Well, when I touch that cup, the atoms in my fingertips and in the cup, they never actually physically touch. Instead, there is a repulsive force that's occurring because the nuclei of the uh, hydrogens and carbons and oxygens and whatever little elements are making up my fingers, well, those nuclei are positive. And when I touch this cup, their nuclei are positive as well. And you put two positive things together, well, they, like you should know by now, they should repel each other. So a force can be an attractive force, a repulsive force. And by pushing on the box, I'm absolutely applying a repulsive force. Depending upon the situation though, it might actually be an attractive force. <clears throat> so let's talk about gravity because, um, part of the animation was the force of gravity. Well, when you um, have an object with mass, mass again is the amount of matter that you have. Well, I don't know if we covered this in class. Maybe I did and some of you got bored and your eyes glazed over. No, I definitely covered this in chemistry, but you know, gravity is the effect of things that have mass. Anything that has mass, even the smallest particle of dust has mass to it. And that mass causes a warping of space-time. Space-time, again, is what everything exists in. It's the three-dimensional space plus uh, time thrown on into this thing that we call the fabric of space-time. But regardless of how mass of an object is, whether it's extremely tiny mass, like the mass of an electron, or something like the mass of a black hole. Everything with mass warps space and time around it. But what happens is that an object with more mass warps space-time more. Because there's more stuff there, it has a bigger effect on the space-time around that object. So the more mass of the object, the more warping of space that occurs, of space-time, the, uh, the bigger the gravity. So when you look at things on Earth, for example, Earth, you know, compared to us, is a fairly massive thing. So it's going to absolutely warp space-time around it. You, on the other hand, not nearly as massive. So you do warp space-time around you, but not nearly as much as the Earth because it just has more mass. <clears throat> now, when you warp space-time around you, you create something called a gravitational field, which means every object in this universe, as long as it has mass, has a gravitational field. A field is an area in space and time that can affect other objects. And for a gravitational field, it's this, well, it's an attractive force. So here I have two gifts, and you can see the effects of gravity. So for example, right here on the Earth, it is a fairly massive object. 
it warps space time around it. Now space time is three dimensional. It's kind of hard to see a three dimensional space time in that picture because you know it's a two dimensional thing, but you can kind of see how the earth is warping this fabric. Think of a trampoline, a bowling ball sitting on that trampoline and how the bowling ball presses down and causes a depression in the trampoline. Well, the Earth does the same thing in this three-dimensional space-time around it. Space-time's four-dimensional, but anyway. So, but not only that, but the Moon also causes a disturbance in space-time. The Sun does the same thing. The Sun is far more massive than the Earth. So it creates a greater depression, a greater warping of space-time, or just a bigger or stronger gravitational field. But when you take two objects that are really close to each other, they are impacted by the other's field, by their gravitational field. So when you look at the Earth and the Moon, they are affecting each other because they are massive objects and they're relatively close to each other, so therefore their fields affect the others. But we are also around the sun, so we are affected by the sun's gravitational field, but the sun is also affected by our gravitational field. But you look at our solar system, there are far more planets and objects, you know, asteroids, you have comets, you have moons, you have gases, dust even that float around. They are all exerting their own gravitational field, and all of it is affecting everything else. When you take objects, though, and get them next to each other, especially massive objects like the Earth and the Sun, well, they tend to want to fall into each other's fields. The thing about it is, is that the Sun so much more massive than all of the stuff combined in our solar system that everything wants to fall into our sun's field. Yeah, there is two gravitational fields at play between the Earth and the sun, but and more based upon the objects that you have in our solar system, but the sun's is so massive that everything wants to fall towards the sun. And that is what makes gravitational an attractive force, because you see these objects wanting to go towards each other, through what we call attraction. So gravity is always an attractive force. It's never repulsive. There is no anti-gravity. It's always just gravity is an attractive force because everything wants to fall towards each other. So I'm gonna show you my gravity simulation now. <clears throat> so let's look at this simulation. And this is the last thing I'm gonna do. What I have here are two objects of extreme mass. 10 billion kilograms, that's a lot of mass. That's like several mountain ranges combined of mass. So that's a fairly large amount of matter. So I'm gonna take two objects, both with the same mass. And you're gonna notice something. As I push them together, look at the force. I don't know if you can hear that sound. Now, as I push these two objects together, they both exert a gravitational field. They both exert a force on each other, an attractive force. So the force on mass one by mass two, this is this being attracted to that, it's about 237.6 Newtons, which is really, it's not a lot of force. Um, you know, it took, 480 newtons roughly to move that uh, that crate in the uh, original animation but if i look at the force on this being exerted by that well, it's only you know it's about half that box so if i have two massive objects and i place them 5.3 kilometers from each other well they're going to exert a force on each other it's actually it's a force you can measure but it's not a lot so I take these two items of the same mass and I push them even further or closer together. What do you think is going to happen to their force? Give me a moment. Think about it. Hmm. All right. Well, the force goes up. In fact, as you keep on reducing the distance 
between these two objects of the same mass, the force increases. See, we're right around here. That's about, what, uh, five kilometers is uh, three miles. So you're sitting around like one, one mile there. So two massive objects that are 2.5 kilometers away from each other, they only exert a force of around a thousand newtons. Still, not a lot. You would think two objects of this size, there would be a stronger gravitational attraction. Because you know, once again, the force due to gravity is a force. You would think that it would be uh, higher, but in fact, it's not. I mean, or you would think it'd be extremely high, but it's not. So here's what I'm gonna leave with you today based upon this animation. And I'm going to uh, link this animation. You can um, visit the website if you want to and play around with it. But your next assignment is going to be, what do you think will happen if I decrease the mass of these objects? Currently, they are 2.5 kilometers away from each other. But what would happen if I decrease the mass of these two objects to maybe, five billion kilograms, what do you think is gonna happen to the force? So that's the first question. The second question is, what if I reduce the distance between these things, but I reduce the mass of these things as well? What do you think is gonna happen? The assignment will be posted on Google Classroom and will be available on the Google Drive that you eventually get, but, um, uh, yeah, I'll explain it with a little more detail. Uh, I hope that you learned something from this today, and that's going to be it for this video. Um, I will see you tomorrow. Mm, this is the awkward moment where I have to try and find the stop recording button and stop.